Hi all, I hope you're not missing your politics lessons too much. Uh, just trying to do another one of these asides with Alan just to try and keep going the kind of stuff that we'd normally be batting around the classroom talking about uh, key events as they're happening and give you some stuff to think about. We're, today we're going to talk about uh, Keir Starmer, the new Labour leader, about who he is, about some of um, some of the key aspects of his early performance. He did his uh, first PMQs yesterday in really, really odd circumstances. Right, so Keir Starmer. First of all, one of the interesting things about him is his name, Keir, quite unusual um, first name. He's actually named after Keir Hardy, who was the first ever leader of the Labour Party. So you can see that uh, Labour is kind of ingrained in his family. His uh, father was uh, a tool maker, his, his mum a nurse. So Keir Starmer, it's especially because he's Sir Keir Starmer, it all might sound um, very grand, but he's been a, a great pain to kind of illustrate the fact he, he's very much got uh, working class roots. Um, his background is in the legal profession. He was a barrister. He then uh, went on to become a Queen's Counsel, a QC, and then rose up to be the Director of Public Prosecutions. So he was the most senior prosecutor in the country. For this work, he was doing with uh, law and the criminal justice system. Uh, he was knighted in 2014. In 2015, he entered politics. And one of the things that's really interesting about this, in terms of political experience, Keir Starmer has not actually been around all that long. Um, so he is MP for Holborn and St Pancras in London and has been since 2015. He, very early on, he was um, given a position in um, the cabinet, uh, shadow cabinet, sorry, uh, and he became shadow minister for immigration. Uh, later on, he became um, shadow minister for Brexit, but there is a resignation in between those two bits. Uh, now, another really kind of interesting bit in terms of um, Starmer's family, though, this is something he doesn't really like to talk about. Um, Starmer has married into a Jewish family. His wife, wife is Jewish, and according to um, some reports I've been able to find, there is a suggestion that his uh, children have been raised in the Jewish faith. So. Well, this is a, a really, really interesting development, given uh, the issues that the Labour Party has faced in terms of uh, anti-Semitism over recent times. <clears throat> Where is he politically? And this is the bit that is slightly trickier to um, to one level. We can go and we can do the background reading. We find out his legal career and um, the uh, bits on family and things like that. But in terms of actual political positioning of him, it's a little bit harder. Now, he is somewhere, we think, towards the middle of the Labour Party. So <clears throat> he's not as far left as Corbyn. He actually resigned um, uh, from due to Corbyn's kind of stance and, and leadership in 2016. But he did then come back and work for him. So I suggest he's not a million miles away from him. Uh, and it, was, it has gone on to support and um, defend a lot of his policies. He's definitely not a Blairite, so he's not on the right of the Labour Party. Um, and we, we've seen that. So, for example, he's, he has uh, gone on record criticising uh, the Iraq war and saying it was illegal, not something you'd necessarily expect a Blair supporter to do. So it doesn't look like he's a Blairite on the right of the party. and It doesn't look like he's a complete Corbynist on the left of the party. Um, he talks about being a moral socialist. And, in, and focuses on the idea of tackling gross inequality. He has talked about higher taxes uh, for the wealthy. He, he has talked about degrees of redistribution of wealth. We don't think he's as radical as Corbyn. Uh, lots of groups within the Labour Party like uh, Momentum are going to keep a close eye on him and go, look, you said you're a socialist. We're going to hold you to that. But again, he is looking to be this unifying force. So he's going to look and, and try and um, pull in the factions on the left of the party and the right of the party and bring them together. Uh, and in that, in that would maybe explain a bit the kind of slight blurring of exactly where he is personally, because if he can come across as being kind of all things to all people, he has a better chance of holding the Labour Party together. And if the Labour Party is going to have any hope of any kind of recovery, it needs that it needs to be united. One area where this might be quite difficult is Keir Starmer is very adamantly a Remainer, uh, and it'll be interesting to see how that plays out. 
Now, given uh, the fact that Brexit can essentially is done and we're now moving on to the trade negotiations and all the rest of it, this may become less of an issue. And obviously the whole Brexit issue has been completely uh, blown off the political kind of map by what's been going on with coronavirus. So Keir Starmer, he is somewhere in the middle of the Labour Party, we think. Some people think he's leaning more towards the left and towards Corbyn. And some people think he's leaning slightly more towards the centre and towards uh, the right of the party and, uh, and Blair. Now, there were candidates essentially running who were either side of him. So in the, in the final three, he was the moderate. He was in the middle. He wasn't um, it, it wasn't on the right of the party. It was on the left of the party. And this might well be why he did so well. So in that leadership campaign, well, it didn't get a lot of press uh, coverage. So we, we were left a bit kind of wondering about it. Um, he was the only man in the latter stages. There's been quite a lot written about that and the fact that Labour still not had a female leader. Um, he, again, that might be because the, the female um, the, the, fem the female choices towards the end were on the kind of extreme ends of the party. Um, he has refused to trash uh, Corbyn's time as leader. So he, he's not wanting to, again, create factionalism and fall out with um, the, the pro-Corbyn side of the party. And he's looking to kind of build some consensus and end the divides in the party. And that's probably the area he spoke about most uh, during his leadership campaign. His victory was very, very convincing with 56% uh, of the vote. Uh, so he won on the first ballot. He won it um, quite solidly. So it looks like we've got a leader which uh, the Labour Party is uniting behind. Now, how has he performed? We started off, again, he came into, into the, the role in a very odd period of time because of what was going on with the uh, coronavirus crisis. So he, he came in kind of talking about um, constructive opposition, that he wasn't going to go kind of flat out for the government on all issues. There's a need for a degree of national unity with the crisis going on. Um, he, he comes across uh, well, I think, in terms of um, someone when he, he's speaking um, to the press and when he's when he's spe speaking in Parliament, obviously you would expect, and this is this is maybe something we're going to see a bit of a shift. You would expect a man who has risen to the top of the world in terms of uh, the legal world as, as a top barrister QC and then um, in charge of uh, prosecutions in the UK. You would expect someone who is going to be a very very competent uh, public speaker, who's going to be a very good debater, who's going to get his uh, point across, who's going to be able to persuade and argue. Um, now, there's been a bit of a shift of tone in the last week or so uh, where Labour, uh, led by Starmer, are looking to, to take the government um, more to account. Uh, and they're taking into account over testing, over uh, PPE for frontline staff uh, and over uh, action about care homes. Uh, and there's a, a quote for him on here. So we, are, we were slow into lockdown, slow on testing, slow on protective equipment, and now slow on, on taking up these offers from British firms. And he talked in PMQs about how he's been contacted by lots of British firms who said, look, we can help. We can produce this protective gear for, for the NHS. And the government just didn't act on it. Something the government obviously um, uh, disputes. And we saw Keir Starmer um, uh, confronting Raab and Raab rebutting this. Um, uh, yesterday. So he seems to be a pretty good performer in, in rather strange circumstances. The press reaction has been generally favourable to his um, first performance in PMQs, but obviously this is a essentially empty chamber and this is him going against Raab rather than him going against Johnson. So there are still lots and lots of unanswered questions about Keir Starmer and what uh, we are likely to um, to see. And we will keep an eye on this. I ask you to keep an eye on this on, on upcoming weeks and see how you think he performs. And if you can get more hints on where exactly he sits within the Labour Party. Now, it might well be that we get more in terms of that once the um, coronavirus crisis is over, because the focus is very much going to be on that. But we might get an idea of some of the economic ideas uh, in terms of uh, the way that Keir Starmer and his Labour Party talk about what should be done to address uh, the economic consequences of the crisis. Right, well, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe. I'm not that far off 100 subscribers, really keen to hit that in the next week. So hit that subscribe button 
and I shall speak to you all again soon. Thank you.